Before we put the finishing touches on our island scene, let's add a little bit more life by adding some movement. So on this third layer, I have a little airplane. And if we sh shift select both layers, uh, then we can see both of them at the same time. So everything in this airplane is parented to the main object, and you can grab that and move it around. And anything that is attached to that is going to follow. Now let's have this little airplane do a loop-de-loop -loop in this guy. That sounds good. So we're going to do that by making this follow a curve. So let's add a curve. Shift A, add. Uh, and I'm just going to make this a path. Seems natural. This plane is going to follow a path. So then I'm going to go maybe three in the side view. So I can rotate this on the Z axis 90 degrees. I'm going to move this kind of far away from the island, making sure we can still see it. Maybe off to the right. Let's put it over the water right over there. Okay, there we go. So if we tab into edit mode on this curve, we can see that we now have these different points and the curve is going to smoothly transition in between all of them. So let's have it start somewhere near the bottom and it can move up like so. Now if we take this last point and press E, we can actually extrude this curve and continue going. So here we have it kind of coming into a loop-de-loop -loop and coming out. Now let's look at this in 3D view to make sure it makes sense. Maybe it banks into it a little bit. All right, so now we have our little loop-de-loop -loop and we can see it from the side right there. Maybe I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. And I'm going to move this farther away, uh, just so that in case there's any shadows or anything, we don't want a small plane casting a, a shadow that makes it obvious that it's actually not as big as the real world object would be. So in order to do that, we need to move it a little bit farther away and make sure that it's actually in view. However, we can't see it from the viewport. So let's select the camera and over in the camera options, we can change this end clipping and just pull that all the way back until we can adequately see our nice little curve right there. And we can move this to be wherever that we'd like. Okay, so now we need this airplane to follow this curve. So let's just select our airplane here. And instead of adding a modifier, because we're not changing the actual geometry or anything like that, uh, I'm going to add a constraint. So let's add a constraint and follow path. And we can select our NURBS path right there. So now we can see that it's starting it. And as we go along, it's not actually following the path. However, let's see, if we select this object and go into the curve options here, down under path animation, we can see the evaluation time. So as we move this along, this airplane is going to go along that path. Now there are a couple problems. Mostly that the airplane's not actually following the curve, so that's easy to fix. We can select follow there. And also when we have the airplane selected, we can go back to the constraint and say follow curve. So now it is correctly following the curve, although it is a little bit backwards. Uh, let's just go into edit mode on the curve really quick because I don't want to animate things backwards. That's just confusing. So let's select everything with A. And then right here under curve tools, let's switch direction. And now it starts right at the correct spot. Now the airplane is pointing in the wrong direction. We don't want it to be pointing that way. We want it to be the opposite. So right now it's facing the Y direction. So let's just flip that to be the negative Y direction. And now everything is all good. 
So let's go back and keyframe that evaluation time. Right in the curve properties here under path animation. Uh, on frame one, let's just give this a value of one and press I, and that's going to insert a keyframe right on that value. And let's go to frame 100, or it could be pretty much any frame that you want. It doesn't have to match. And you can see that's going to match right at the end right there. And I can press I to insert another keyframe. And now the plane is going to animate right in between the two. Very cool. Now I don't like how it's necessarily curving right at the end, so we can actually fix that in edit mode with the curve again. We can select these and we can choose control T on the keyboard and twist this so that those areas are going to have a certain twist. So now it will level out again right as it comes in. Okay, so if we look at this from the camera view, our airplane starts out, goes in a little loop-de-loop, -loop, and there we go. Very cool. Uh, but you will notice something really kind of strange that doesn't look very natural. If we play this back, it's going to start out slowly, go through that loop really fast, and then slow back down. But of course an airplane isn't necessarily going to slow down in the midair. It would just kind of fall out of the sky. Uh, so let's make sure that this doesn't happen. I can split my view by dragging one of these corners right here. And I'm going to change this window to the graph editor. And that's going to give us a graph of our animation. If we select everything and press period on the number pad, that's going to zoom everything to an appropriate level so we can see it all clearly. And you can see the curve right here. So it's easing into the animation. Uh, this is representing the change of position over time. So it's starting out slowly. The slope of this, a very steep slope, is going to indicate a large change. And a uh, more horizontal slope is going to show no change at all. So that's the way you can read this graph. And we don't want that easing in and out. So what we can do is just select everything with A, hit V, and just change the uh, handle type to vector. And that way we're going to have some straight lines. And there we go. So now that our animation ends on frame 100, we don't want to render anything past that. So just down here on the timeline, I'm going to press E, and that's going to set the end right at the uh, time marker. So that's definitely a handy shortcut that you can use, and I use that all the time when uh, previewing animations. Okay, so now we have the airplane animated, but we also want to animate the water, because if the airplane's moving, the water probably should be too, and we can do this very easily. So in the modifier, let me just go back to frame one, we have a time right here and that can be animated just like uh, the curve position could be animated earlier. So let's set that to 1. And for the animation here, I'm just going to set this to 10 so everything will go really quickly. And I'm going to press I to insert a keyframe for that time. Now if I go forward to say frame 50, I can change this to 2, press I again, and now it's going to transition in between the two. But again, Water doesn't really slowly ease into something and then speed up and then slow down again. That doesn't really make any sense. So let's do the same thing that we did before by changing these handle types into vectors so that they're straight lines in between each other and are not easing in and out. So I'm going to press V and choose a vector. And now we're going to have that straight line. But another problem that we're going to run into is that after a while, the water just stops. And if we move this keyframe to the end of the timeline, we're also going to have to adjust the speed, and anytime you change the beginning or end point, you're going to have to change this curve here, and it'll be a huge pain. So instead, to avoid all of that, uh, let's just select everything with A, and I can go to Channel, Extrapolation Mode, and choose Linear. And what that's going to do is, instead of using a constant extrapolation, where it's just going to choose this point and repeat that point forever, uh, it's going to see the change between the last two points and repeat that change forever. And now we have this water continuing on 
perpetually. So this water will never stop flowing. So that's very cool. And as we play this back, we can see if we need to increase or decrease the speed. Looks like it's going a little bit slow. So let's just change that by pressing G and Y to move it only in the Y direction. And we can change this slope. And the steeper the slope, the faster the water is going to flow. All right, looking good. So let me just really quickly do that to the other two, and then we'll be ready to go. You can use the shortcut Shift E to get to that extrapolation mode if you need to. All right, so now we have some nicely animated water and we also have an animated airplane. Now, in case you are seeing the airplane from a little bit closer, the camera is pretty far away, so we wouldn't notice the fact that the propellers are not spinning. However, if you are really close, you're definitely gonna notice that and it's gonna look super funny. So let's just fix that really quick. So we want these propellers to rotate and since they're parent to the object, any animation is going to follow the parent. So we can just rotate these uh, in their local direction. And as that changes, it's also going to continue in that local direction as the airplane moves. So you don't have to worry about it spinning incorrectly uh, or anything like that. So that's very nice. Let's just go to frame one and press period on the number pad to zoom into this. And I'm gonna choose from global our pivot or our, our, our uh, transform orientation I'll change that to local and you can now see that it's pointing straight along the axis of this object instead of the world and then I can change this to rotation and now we can rotate this precisely in the correct direction so let's just select all of these right here And I can press I to insert a keyframe for rotation. That way we're not adding unnecessary keyframes, so we're just adding rotation. Let's go to frame 20. Well, let's go to frame 10. Now what's cool is I can set this pivot point to individual origins. And now when I rotate this on the local X axis, say about, let's go about 45 degrees. And now I can press I, insert keyframe for rotation. And you can see we now have that rotation right there. Now again, we want this to be a straight rotation. So let's press, select everything, hit V and choose vector. And again, we're going to press shift E and use linear extrapolation. And now these propellers are going to rotate forever. Uh, so now if we take a look as we play this back, I'm gonna hide the island so we're not distracted by it. As we play this back, we now have the airplane moving and the propellers are spinning. Very cool. But uh, they are spinning a little bit slow. So I can just take these two keyframes and scale them on the x-axis. That's going to make the slope even more steep. As we play this back, it's a little bit hard to see but we now have those propellers spinning. And the steeper that slope is, the faster those are going to uh, spin. And so you can change that to your liking. So that's it for animation. In this video, we've animated the airplane along a curve doing a little loopy loop. We've animated the water to flow continually and never stop. And we've also animated the propellers to rotate over and over and over again. So in the last, in the next video, uh, which will be the final video. We'll do some touch-up work and also do our final rendering and composite.